I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Commander Cory Shepard began exploring the galaxy and righting all of the wrongs that she could find. It was Side Quest Central. She also maxed out her Paragon points by using an exploit. And if you're interested in also using that exploit, check the upper right hand corner for the eye and check out that video right now. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. We are playing on Insanity Difficulty, and uh, this, uh, it's been, uh, the episode's a bit, it's been, the last one with the side quest was huge. This one, we're going to try to tackle everything that we can in the Citadel. I'm excited to see what we can do. Uh, I also thought I'd show you that, yes, my Paragon, my Paragon points are maxed out because we use that that monkey glitch uh monkey exploit whatever but that's going to allow us to be able to get a more complete game for you during this this one playthrough that i'm able to do so i wanted to make sure that i had access to all of the charm options that i could during this playthrough so without further ado let's jump into it we are going to the citadel today to try to knock out as many quests as we possibly can if you did miss the last episode, look at all of the side quests that we were able to finish. Absolutely wild. So, let's go ahead and let's head to the Citadel. Fi hey, thanks, Outriders. Appreciate that. You know, before we go to the Citadel, we've done a lot of assignments. And I think we should probably talk to our crew. And, in fact, I already know things are about to get a little spicy with our crew. And I'm kind of excited to see it. First up, Mr. Caden. What's going on, man? Do you have some time to talk now, Commander? Uh, sure. Of course. Have a seat. We've played it pretty close to the book so far, but we're a long way from backup. We've got some tough calls to make. I'm just saying, try to leave yourself a way out. I've seen what cutting corners can do, and I'd hate to have that happen to you, Shepard. Commander. Uh... What... What are you... What are you talk... What are you talking about? That's not the appropriate way to address your commanding officer, Lieutenant. Sorry, ma'am. Maybe I got a bad signal. And if you're a... Maybe there's someone else you'd rather confide in. Ma Do you mean Liara? Someone? You're referring to our young Prothean expert. <laughs> I think she's older than both of us put together, but uh, yeah. There's a lower deck rumor that she's uh, interested in you. Really? She's more than a source of Prothean data. She's a very interesting lady. Not to my uh, tastes, but uh, I never claimed to be big on alien culture. Wait a minute. Caden, uh, so first of all, are you saying Liara's into me? Because that's pretty cool. Are you jealous, though? You seem awfully worried about my personal affairs. It's just that we don't have much downtime these days. And I like being around you, but I I don't want to take up your personal time. Uh, I'm here, though. Look, you didn't want to talk about Liara, did you? What's your real issue? You're right. Sorry, it wasn't, uh, Liara's not my main concern. I'm not questioning any decision you've made, Shepard. Let me be clear about that. It's just my experience that once someone lets something slide, it tends to pick up speed. Do you get my meaning? Uh, yeah. Talk to me, Caden. You got a little black rain cloud sitting over your head. I'll try to keep the deck dry. You know the records about the biotic training out on Jump Zero? They're all classified because the Alliance made mistakes. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. So what you're you're comparing a relationship? I'm. Hmm. Okay. Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link Biotics and Ezo. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping them not break their own limbs. And their choice of teachers didn't help much. Who were the experts? The only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think, asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. 
Why wouldn't you ask the Asari? I didn't know Turians even had bionics. The Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. Oh. Man. Your Sir Kinetics did what they thought was best. It wasn't best for us. They brought in an ex-military Turian named Commander Vernus. To introduce himself, he liked to say, I was at the helm of the Dreadnought that killed your father. When I told him my dad wasn't in the war, he'd retired to Vancouver. My family had an inland home that matured to New Beachfront. Vernus had it in for me after that. He cut corners, pushed hard. I mean, you either came out a Superman or a wreck. A lot of kids snapped. A few died. The point of all of this, I guess, is that when you cut corners, it's not always obvious who pays for it. Why are you telling me this, though? So why are you telling me this? Is there something I can do to help you get over it? I'm 32, Shepard. You don't serve as long as I have without coming to terms with yourself. You also learn that if someone is special to you, you help them. Try to keep them from making mistakes. Are you calling me special? Special, huh? If I'm out of line, just say the word. Uh, you know, but I'm interested, now but not right now. the ideal time. But I want to talk about this, Caden. I get you, Shepard. I don't make a habit of complicating the chain of command. Just think about what I said. Anyways, what about personal just input? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. All right. Well, we already had that, so I guess... We'll talk later, Caden. Caden had that full conversation about Commander Vernus so that so that he could hit on us? I, I You know... Anyways, Commander Shepard is keeping her options open for now. You know, she she does have a huge crush on the Asari Liara to Sony, but... You know, maybe Liara's not into her the way she's into, you know? So, might as well keep... <laughs> keep Caden on the hook, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, let's check in with Liara. I heard a rumor, Liara! I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Yeah, tell me more about you. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, and making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. It's true, but that's because we're short-lived. We don't have the luxury of time. And Asari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. Oh, that's longer than I thought. That is true. At first, I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. Intimidating? You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. True. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can, Liara. There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what happened on Akuz. The fact that you survive shows a remarkable strength. You know, you could have just talked to me about it. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have told you whatever you wanted to know. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the woman you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Hmm. Are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Lieutenant Delenko. Now, what's interesting to me is that Shepard has the option to be like, You're female! Uh, so which is, you want you know, a relationship with me? Even though we're both women? Yeah, that's... It's a we Asari are monogendered, Commander. Shepard. Male and female do not have any real meaning for us. We do, however, have maternal instincts. So perhaps we would fill what you consider a female role. 
I'm sorry if this is awkward for you, Shepard. I am only trying to be honest. I feel as if we share some type of connection. But oh. none of this matters if you are already involved in a serious relationship with Lieutenant Elenko. It's it's not it's not serious. The lieutenant and I are just friends. Nothing more. Exactly. My mistake then. I am not as adept at understanding human relationships as I thought. But what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction or was I wrong about that too? Get it, get it! I'm I'm attracted to you, Liara. No. You were right. There is something between us. I knew it, and I knew you felt it too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? We have only known each other a short time. We are from two different species. We have almost nothing in common. This makes no sense. It doesn't have These to. These things never make sense. They just happen and we get swept up in the storm. You make it sound so chaotic, so dangerous. That's why it's a fun. little danger makes things exciting. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You. I need some time. Yeah, for sure. Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's let's just talk about something else for now. Well, you don't really have anything else to say, so I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Goodbye, Liara. I love you. I mean, sorry, too soon. I get Goodbye, that. Liara. I, bye. What was what was that? She just did like a little dance for us. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, let's let's go. Let's get it. All right, let's go back down. We're going to go down into the uh the docking area, whatever you want to call it, and talk to our crew, the rest of our crew. We got Rex, Ashley, Tali, Garrus, of course. Garrus, my Come guy. On. Good to see you. Now, he'll actually give us a very early version of what later becomes loyalty quest. In Mass Effect 1, there are loyalty quests, but they're not as important as you'll see in Mass Effect 2. So, personal You've questions. You've been with C-Sec a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. Anything specific? I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. Ew. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. Is this... Wait a minute, is this common? You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market, but they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. An Elcor did? But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. <laughs> Hello, I've come to hack you into pieces. What'd you find? So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development, but there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Okay. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. They have four testicles? Somebody's making a killing out there. All right, so what about this doctor? What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. You were interviewing. You mean threatening? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. 
Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. What? He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. Ugh. Bastard. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. What? Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop it. But you went after him anyway, right? Can't. I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. No, I agree with them, though. It's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Palin and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. Uh, I think you're wrong here, my friend. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a badge. Yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't make it any easier, but I see your point. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. What else about, so he's still out there? Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. Oh, but you're talking to a Spectre, my friend. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. Absolutely. And there you go. So he'll give us a quest to go take down Dr. Salian. He'll teach us all about what happened. And I highly recommend doing that quest and bringing Garrus with you. And you'll see that we actually have a couple of quests that are like that, where we need to bring uh, somebody with us. We'll actually get one from Rex as well. Commander. Can we talk, Ashley? Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. Hey. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Back off. He's not he's not mine, but you know, just just in case Liara ends up not but I forget. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already sweet on someone. What's up? You didn't come by to uh -oh. eavesdrop on family mail. He's talking about us. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Huh, what about your dad? Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above serviceman third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. Nice. What about your mom? What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be. Able to raise kids while dad's away on a six-month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. Ew. You sisters? You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest. She's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. Hmm. And home? Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. Huh. 
Must be nice. You're lucky to have a close family. Sorry, I forgot about your family situation. Oh, no, it's all good. Or lack thereof. Relax, Williams. I've dealt with it. Ask me to clear a bunker of armed hostiles? No problem. Dealing with a foot in my mouth? Not so good with that. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Tell me about it. Sounds like a story. You like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple of years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen Hellwai away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. No means no. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. I don't... I, 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 Mike thought they'd go for um, a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing mom and dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Did you call the police? Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. What about the self-defense? You self said all sisters self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. Oh, she they sounds cool to me. To her figure, though. What about you? So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand-to-hand. -hand. Oh, all right. Dope. Dedicated of you. traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. What? I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. Nice. Wow. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. When he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. <laughs> I love how there's not... That was pointless. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming Poetry. with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Huh. You read poetry. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at 100 meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. It's a good Does piece. Does still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. From the afterlife. Meaning from wherever we go after death. Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Uh, not my place you to judge. You your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. 
I appreciate that, Skipper. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. No, no, don't worry about it. What else can we talk about? I should get back to my duty, Skipper. Rifles don't maintain themselves. Not yet, anyway. Oh. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. And that's all we can get from Ashley it's for now. Chief. We learned a lot. Ma'am. She likes poetry and her family and all that. Anyways, what about what Rex? Do you want, Shepard? I want to talk about you. Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Yes. Such as? Such as? I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why leave? Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. Hmm. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared. One of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What about you? What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. But probably not Jared. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. And, of course... Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well... There are what? some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your dad? Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. Nice job, Rex. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. I don't know if I want I've to see that. I've got some unfinished business with my family, but that's all. Really? What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Armor? What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Atus. A Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. You know, this is yet another loyalty quest in... Hey, Rex, we'll look for it. Just tell me where to start looking. 
I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. Good. So long, Rex. Shepard. So, looks like we have Rex to go take find his family armor. We got Garrus who wants to go find Dr. Salian or Dr. Hart. What about Tally? It feels like we're getting near the end, doesn't it, Shepard? With Saren, I mean. We literally haven't done any main story quest at all, except for a uh, chirp. Sure. Won't be much longer. One way or another, it'll all be over soon. You'll find the conduit before he does. I know you will. You have to. And after this is all over, when my pilgrimage ends and I go back to my own people, I'll be proud to say I was a part of it. An important part. Couldn't have done this without you, Tally. You've been good to me. A lot of people treat Quarians like second-class citizens. They just want us to go back to our fleet and disappear. But you've treated me just like everyone else on your crew. Like an equal. That means a lot, and it says something about you. Whatever happens, I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna miss you when you go back to your own people, Tally. That won't happen for a while yet. I'll be right here anytime you need me. I should go. Great! See you later. That's checking in with all of our comrades, and that means that it's time to head to the Citadel. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander, I'm glad you're in the area. We've got an emergency situation, and you're the only one I can trust to get the job done. Admiral Hackett popping back in. How can I help, Admiral? Biotic fanatics have hit a medical research station with a psychotropic drug. The drugs have temporarily driven researchers crazy, and the biotics are effectively using them as human shields. Oh, I can't just run in then. So if I shoot everything that moves, a lot of researchers are going to die. Exactly. A normal team could handle the biotics, but a lot of innocent researchers would die during the operation. That's why I contacted you. I'm hoping you can keep the casualties to a minimum. Yeah, I can do that. I'll do everything within my power to bring those researchers back safely, Admiral. I know you will, Commander. I'm sending you the station coordinates now. Fifth fleet out. Thanks. Anyways, the Citadel. I know it's only been two episodes or so since the last time that we were here together, but for me, it's been hours and hours and hours. It feels like forever. Finally heading back to the Citadel, being able to complete all of the side quests. That, it feels like ages ago, but it really wasn't that long. Anyways, we want to head to the airship dock so that we can leave. We're going to go ahead and actually choose Tally and Rex on our team here because we still don't have those trophies, even though we've done a ton of side quests. So we want to go ahead and use them by using the airlock. We can go ahead and put Tally and Erdnot Rex into our group. Sure. Exo the first has time the deck. that we've head out. Now, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to go do all of those side quests before we came back here. Why I wanted to max out our charm so it's as high as possible and our paragon points. And that is because this admiral right here, you have no choice but to talk to him when you when you first come back to the Citadel after completing one of the missions. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, Pith Fleet. Hello, sir. We weren't told to expect you, sir. I would have prepared a formal greeting. Spare me the pleasantries. Oh, okay. I command it's be like the 63rd that. Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. And the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship and you. Yeah, think of it as uh, opportunity, bud. I still but... serve the Alliance, sir. As a Spectre, I can advance our interests to the Council. Huh. You still know what color your blood is, Shepard? I don't begrudge the politician's decision to throw you to the Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin, though. Uh, don't you ever talk the about- The Normandy is a fine ship, sir. She's served us well so far. It's a gimmick, Commander. Useless in a stand-up fight. This experiment diverted billions from our appropriations bills for the same price we could have had a heavy cruiser. But no. We had to make nice to the Turians, throw money at a co-developed boondoggle. I'm here to make an inspection, Commander. Uh, Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. Excuse me? So you could actually renegade this and say, ah, nah, I don't think so. But we're actually going to let him do it. We'd be honored to show her to you, Admiral. We have nothing I'll to hide. just bet. Wait here. 
I won't be long. But I can't go with you? Commander, I'm not happy. Too bad. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. And there we go! Quarian Ally Trophy Pops! Putting the commander aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? Uh, well, actually, that's a Turian design. Again, you might have enough Renegade or uh, Intimidate points or Charm points, and you'll be able to have this conversation. Modified Turian style. They prefer commanders looking over their subordinates rather than in the middle of them. We wanted to see how effectively they can command with that setup. Hmm. Reasonable goal, but they should have studied that in a lab rather than on a frontline warship. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it to hide for a few hours anyway? So you'll Useless. see, each time that he has an issue, we have something to say we about it. We can loiter in an enemy system and monitor traffic or drop infiltration teams on enemy worlds. Normandy could be more effective than the Solarian STG. Maybe, maybe. But that's not the job of a proper warship. We're supposed to find and kill the enemy fleet, not count how many times their garrison goes to the bathroom. That's a good point, I and guess. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Krogan? Yeah. Asari? Yup. Turians? Yes. What are you thinking, Commander? You can't allow alien nationals free access to Alliance equipment. Yeah, you do not talk about my allies Between like Saren and the Geth, we have enough enemies out here. Treating other species with suspicion and distrust won't win hearts and minds. That assumes the hearts and minds are worth winning. That hasn't been proven yet. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? And this is the one that requires nine points into charm, which is a huge amount to get if you're coming back to the Citadel after one main mission, which is why we did so many of the side quests and everything else. I think Normandy is a good ship, sir. Even if you disagree, you have to see that her joint construction and multiracial crew make the Alliance look better. Your job is to look good, Commander. The Alliance Navies is to win wars. I'm not convinced Normandy isn't a waste of taxpayer money, but I am convinced that you believe otherwise, and that you'll use it to its best ability. Damn right. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as negative as I planned. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Well, this conversation went much better than expected. All because of those charm points. And we got a bunch of XP for that and Paragon 2. Now, yes, Tally? So we actually did just get Tally's trophy unlocked. There's something right here that we can see. Normandy weapons. Let's go ahead and inspect that for a codex entry. That's actually new. We weren't able to see that before. And we have the Normandy hull here that we can inspect as well for another codex entry in 61 XP. Now, remember this keeper because we are going to grab that quest for the keepers. But first, we need to, uh, unfortunately, replace Tally, Zora, and Araya. This time, we're going to take Rex, and we're actually going to take Ashley Williams as well, even though we already have the trophy for her. That's because there's a quest where she will have additional dialogue interior pressure due to the fact that she's an Alliance soldier. Atmosphere. So now that the Admiral's gone, let's go ahead and use this to go down into CSEC. Alliance officials report that a Geth incursion into the Armstrong Cluster has been repulsed. Damn right it Geth has. Suffering heavy casualties. Now, all us, man. All us. In the event of future Geth activity, the Alliance plans to maintain a strong security presence in the area. Real quick, we have a ton of points that we can go ahead and give to Ashley. She's got 15 points here. So let's go ahead and dump those off. We'll uh, upgrade her combat armor all the way. And we'll actually do her fitness as well. Uh, just so she has that and the one point that we can into soldier. There we go. Perfect. Might as well just keep them up to snuff. Now, as soon as we got a C sec, we'll Commander find. Shepherd, sorry to bother you. Is this is Lieutenant Girard down in the docking bay? There is a woman here. Uh, she was rescued from Batarian slavers a few weeks ago. She is from Mindwar. I guess she was taken in the raid on your town. That right there is a one of the background choices that you can make dictates which quest you get in this game. And that was the one for being a colonist. She's been a slave for the past 13 years. Is she all right? Not really. She's a little messed up. You she think? got free somehow. Grabbed a gun from one of my guys. Now she's holed up here in the docking bay. She, uh, she says she wants to die. I hope you talk to her. It's a long shot, but you went through the same thing. The raid. I figured... Maybe you could talk her out of her tree. Yeah, I'll help. I'm on my way, Lieutenant. Sit tight. Anything you could do would be great. I don't want to... Uh, 
She's been through enough. I'll have my men stand by for you. Great, thank you. And right here we'll find Kalisa Al Jalani. Kalisa been seen in Al Jalani, Westernland News. Would name. you answer a few questions for our viewers? Uh, sh all right. What do you want to know? You've been given a unique position to represent our race. People want to get a sense of how you'll do that. Sure, yeah. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? I'm honored. The specters represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? And we have different options here. They know better or it's not like that. The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Yeah, absolutely. The Turians helped build it. Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So, the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? Oh, what a spin, Do you think girl. it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? Mm, the Crystal Alliance. I wasn't aware it had been handed over to anyone. I'm in command, and last I checked, I'm human. Same goes for my crew. Human, yes, but you do work for the Citadel now, Commander. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? Um, yeah, he was behind Saren Eden Prime. Saren instigated the attack on our colony at Eden Prime. Once his involvement was proven to the Council, I was assigned to bring him in. That's surprising, Commander. The official line says Eden Prime was attacked by rogue synthetics. Good luck in your mission. Thank you for your time, Commander Shepard. You're welcome, Kalisa, Kalisa Al Jelani. So, we could renegade real hard there, but we're not going to. Uh, <laughs> I just want to point out that you can. You definitely, definitely can. So, we're actually going to go ahead and use the rapid transport station. And there's something that I want to show you. And that is actually, we're going to head to the med clinic for this one. And we're going to take an advantage of how to get, basically infinite credits because that's just what we do now is i just show you infinite stuff anyways let's go check in on dr chloe michelle i need those supplies for my clinic i can't you can and you will or your story won't stay secret for long don't disappoint me doctor yes she's being blackmailed Oh, Commander Shepard, I didn't see you come in. You need some help? Every time I come in here, I see someone threatening you. Who was that? Someone from my past. I can take care of it. No, come on. I might be able to help you. I was fired by my previous employer for giving out free medical supplies to clinics like this. They never filed any charges. They just wanted me to leave without any fuss. But somebody must have found out. Now they are blackmailing me. For, I have for being to nice. give them what they want. If the board finds out about my past, I could lose my license. They'll shut my clinic down. Yeah, I can help with that. Maybe I can get you out of this. Tell me what they want. I have to give some of my medical supplies to a merchant in the markets. They expect delivery today. Yeah, I can do that. Give me your contact's name. I'll deal with this guy, whoever he is. Deal with him? But won't they expose my past? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be good. I'll make sure they don't tell anyone. I was told to speak with a merchant named Morlan down in the market. Hey, we know that guy. I really appreciate this, Commander. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So we'll come back and. Don't worry. I'll take care of this. You need to do this quest Good to be luck, able to get Commander. the infinite be credits that we need there. to do. And you'll see what I mean. It is a little time consuming. It's not super easy to do. I mean, it's easy, but it's not like, you know, the most fun thing to do. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave there. And we're going to head towards the markets. And there's actually more quests that we can kind of pick up on our way there. And right here, we can talk to Conrad Werner. Wow, it's you. Hello. You're Commander Shepard, the hero of Eden Prime. I am so honored to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And you are? My name is Conrad. Conrad Werner. They say you killed more than a hundred Geth on Eden Prime. Uh, it was like 
I don't know, nine or ten. I spent most of my time trying to stay alive and help the colonists. Hey, I know you're probably busy, but um, do you have time for a quick autograph? Yeah, sure. Weird, but okay. Anything for a fan. Here. Thanks. I really appreciate it. My wife is going to be so impressed. I'll let you get back to work. Oh, but next time you're on Earth, I'd love to buy you a drink. Thanks again. No problem. What a nice guy. All right, I'll see you, Conrad Werner. I'm sure we won't be seeing him again. Seems seems like a seems like a great, excitable guy. Anyways, we'll come down here, and this is where Moreland is. We have to get him to stop blackmailing. Hello there. Welcome to Moreland's famous shop. You want many good supplies, yes? Yes, but I'm here about Dr. Michelle. You were expecting a delivery of medical supplies. But I was told the doctor would be bringing them. Change of plans. A change, but the doctor... I don't... This is not right, human. Shut up, Moreland. I told Baines you'd screw this up. What the hell's going on here? Who are you? I'm a friend of Dr. Michelle, and I'm here to shut you up. Leave the doctor alone. We can end this if you just bring me those supplies. Otherwise, I'll start telling people about the doctor's little secret. And we can charm our way out of this one. You're shutting down a medical clinic. What if someone needs treatment? What if you need treatment? Hey, hold on. I'm just the middleman here. This is way more than I bargained for. That was easy. Thank you, human. It is good to see him humbled so. Yeah, but who's Baines? What do you know about Baines? I have never met him, human. I only worked with the one who spoke with the doctor. All right, I should go Goodbye. there. Yes, all right then. Good tidings to you, human. Good good tidings to you as well. We also got uh, a bunch of Paragon points for that. Now, we are pretty close to Korra's Den. Good tidings to you, human. And we get Paragon, uh, eight Paragon points, which is pretty nice. And we can quickly get back to the med clinic and take advantage of free money, baby, by using the Citadel Rapid Transit that's right outside of Korra's Den. Even though we have stuff to do in Korra's Den, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to head right to the med clinic. Commander... How did things go? As you would he won't expect. Be bothering you anymore. Really? That's a great relief, Commander. Thank you. I can't pay you for your help, but I can give you a discount on any supplies you purchase here. Really? Well, who is Baines, by the way? A thug said he worked for a man named Baines. Sound familiar? Baines? I wonder if he means Armiston Baines. We worked together a long time ago. Who is he? What can you tell me about him? Last I heard, the Alliance military was contracting him for some research in the Traverse. I wonder if the captain knows him. Good idea. We'll see what the captain can tell us. I wish I could tell you more. Is there anything else I can help you with, Commander? Hang on one I'll be second. Going now. So, Good here's luck, what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that we save our game here. We have a fresh nice save. And we'll go ahead yes, and talk Commander, to Chloe Michelle. Now, she you? offers us a discount on all of the stuff that she sells. But more than that, she also offers us more money for Let selling her what things. For sale. So what we're going to do course. is we're going to go to her cell and we want to sell our first 20 items. So we sold her our first 20 items. Now what we want to do is we actually want to leave here and go to the markets. So we come over here. We talk to him. Welcome back. Let him know that we want to buy back everything that we actually just sold to our dear uh, Dr. Chloe Michelle. So we'll go ahead and buy all this back. Uh, three, we're at three hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. All right, three hundred and thirty-four thousand credits. Let's go there. Now, what we want to do is we're going to go back to our dear med clinic, Chloe Michelle. So we're at three hundred and thirty-four thousand before we sell. And after buying everything back, you'll see that we had a profit of about 100,000 credits. That, my friends, is how you get basically all of the credits that you need in this game. So we're making about 100,000 every single time that we do this. Which is useful because there's actually really good things you can get from the guy that sells you Spectre stuff at a certain point after you get a certain amount of credits. All you have to do is amass 1 million credits. This used to be an achievement, but it's actually not there anymore. And you can continue doing this exploit for the whole rest of the game. It doesn't really go away, so that's a pretty handy thing. And head to the embassies. Now, you may remember there was somebody who wanted our attention when we were leaving the other day. This man over here, Samesh Bhatia. So let's Excuse go ahead and talk me, to him. 
Could you spare a moment of your time? Yes, absolutely. And we have Ashley in our party actually for this. So let's go ahead and Commander talk. Shepard, my name is Samesh Bhatia. Forgive the intrusion, but I have nowhere else to turn. Hey, I'm happy to help, my friend. What's going it's on? It's no trouble. What can I do for you? My wife was a Marine. She was in the 212 on Eden Prime. Wait, the 212? Your wife was serviceman Narali Bhatia. I'm Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. I served in her unit. Chief Williams, it is a pleasure. Nirali spoke of you with great respect. I'm so sorry for your loss, Mr. Bhatia. Nirali was a good woman. What can we do for you? I've requested that my wife's body be returned to me for cremation, but the military has refused my request. Did they say why? Why did they refuse your request? There's got to be some reason. I don't know. All I know is that they have declared it impossible for my wife to be returned to me. She wasn't turned into a husk, was she? Because you know, we'll, we'll fix this for you. There's no reason for your wife's body to be held like this. Just wait here. The man in charge of my case is Mr. Bosker. When I last saw him, he was in the expensive bar over there. Thank you for your time. I just want to give my wife a proper funeral and the respect she deserves. You got it. Absolutely, Smesh. So first, though, we're going to go talk to Anderson and see if he knows anything about this, this Baines guy. And then we'll head to the bar. So let's go ahead and grab what we can here. Or Armistice Baines. Uh, looks like you guys are in the middle of something here. Also looks like there's a nav manual. We can examine that for some more XP and a codex. I heard what happened under the Artemis Tau Cluster. The Council wasn't too happy about the destruction of those Prothean ruins. Deal with it, Udina. This isn't a game, Ambassador. Shepard's out there trying to stop Saren from destroying the galaxy. I know, I know. Just try to be a little more careful. The Council's watching you. And we all get judged on how you behave. You better not. I'm a specter. I'll put you down. You talk to me like that. Yes, Commander. I want to know about Baines. What do you know about Armiston Baines? Where did you hear that name? Never mind. I don't want to know. Baines is dead. Has been for quite some time. Mm, you sure about that? The people I spoke with seem to think he was still alive. It's not common knowledge. Military is keeping it under wraps. Baines was doing some high-level work for the Alliance. Stuff even I wasn't aware of. One day he turns up dead on a drifting scout ship. Everyone suspects it was foul play, but it was never officially investigated. A scout ship? What can you tell me about the ship? I don't know much about it. You should talk to Admiral Kohoku. One of his crews discovered Baines' body. Where is he? Any idea how to find him? Last I heard, he was up in the tower trying to get the Council to investigate Baines' death. Is there anything else, Commander? Uh, no, that's it. I should go. So it looks I'll like here if you need anything. we're on a wild goose chase. We need to go talk to Admiral Kohoku, who we actually did see back when we were in the tower. We saw him over on the side, uh, but he didn't offer us anything. He just kind of said, Commander, and kept going about his business. So let's go ahead and help Samesh Bhatia as much as we can here by heading into this expensive embassy bar and talking to a certain diplomat to see if we can get his wife's body released. And now you know why we brought Ashley, because she actually, well, that person served in her unit. So we'll talk to this guy here. We also can talk to Nasana later, because remember, we got a quest from her in the last episode. My goodness, you're Commander Shepard. I am. Your activities made for quite a briefing in the Diplomatic Corps. Is there something I can do to assist you? Yeah, I'm here for Samesh. Yes. A man named Samesh Bhatia is having some trouble claiming his wife's body. Ah, Mr. Bhatia. A good man in an understandably frustrating position. I wish I could help him. Serviceman Narali Bhatia died on Eden Prime, as Mr. Bhatia no doubt told you. Her wounds are inconsistent with any type of weapon damage we've seen before. That is why her body is being held. She's toxic? You think that her body might be dangerous or contaminated? No, Commander. Narali Bhatia is not dangerous. Her body is in fact extremely valuable to the Alliance. The tests we're conducting may lead to better defenses against Geth attacks. Respectfully, Serviceman Bhatia may save more lives in death than she did in life. Well, let's go ahead and investigate. What, what, how long is this going to take? How long do you think this research is going to take? This is a long-term study. I wouldn't expect the bodies to be released for a year or longer. Okay, and how many bodies are there? you got to have a lot of bodies. Can't you release one? Very few bodies had this new type of weapon damage, and very few were in good enough condition to study. Beyond that, Commander, we need as many bodies as we can to get a reasonable sample size. 
And what are you going to do with the results? When will this research result in actual new technology? If we're lucky, we'll actually realize usable technology from this study in a few years. Yeah, you know what? This isn't right, though. I understand what you're trying to do, but holding the body is wrong. Commander... You, of all people, should understand how far we must go to protect humanity. I do, and you're wrong. Not if we lose our humanity in the process. I am out here fighting to stop crap like this. All right, Commander. You win. It was hard enough refusing Mr. Bhatia. I'm not going to risk an incident by refusing you. Tell Samesh that the body is being shipped back to Earth. I'll go now to see to it myself. Thank you. Thank you, Bosker. I appreciate the help. Thank you. We got a ton of Paragon points for helping... Retrieve Batia's body. And we're gonna head back down. And let Batia know the good news. Smash? Hello again, Commander. Has there been any word? She's coming home. I reminded Mr. Bosker what we're fighting for. Your wife is coming home. Thank you. I will return home and begin my preparations. It does not bring me happiness. But it may bring me peace. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye. Samesh, I don't know if this helps, but your wife, Nirali, loved you very much. She missed your cooking, and she played recordings of you every night before she went to sleep. I know, Miss Williams. But thank you. It's nice to hear it again. Poor guy. And we leveled up. Ton of XP, journal entries, all of that jazz. Anyways, that will do it for this episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. We are going to swap out our party in the next episode, but to do that, we actually have to do that side quest that we got when we walked down the elevator. As soon as we go to the docking bay uh, to get back to the Normandy, we're going to, it's going to start that quest. Uh, so it's a little bit longer than I want to do right now. So we'll do it in the next episode. And we'll put a party of Garrus and Liara on our squad, which is probably going to be the game that we finish, uh, the team that we finish this up in. But real quick, I do want to show the rewards that we actually got for unlocking the Quarian Ally Trophy and the Kroken Ally Trophy. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. And we'll see that the Kroken Ally, we now regenerate one health per second. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but hey! It's free regeneration, so we'll take it. And for the Quarian, sabotage and AI hacking recharge time has been improved by 10%. Not super useful for our adept, uh, but we only have two ally trophies left, and we haven't even done the side, qu the side quests that are on the Citadel, so that's huge! Anyways, in the next episode, we will get these next two trophies and complete all of the assignments that we can on the Citadel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And just so you know, I will have an infinite credits video that's just about that part uh, that will be uploaded as well. And there are the infinite uh, Paragon points that you can get. And we have the uh, how to unlock every ability trophy in the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, never give up, never surrender to... to... Blackmail? It works.